What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A Plus 220 1101 certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, you're going to learn about laptop hardware and components such as the battery component, keyboards, RAM, hard disk drives, solid state drives, wireless cards, biometrics, and near field communication. So let's talk about the hardware and device replacement. So before we get started, due to the size of a laptop in comparison to that of a desktop computer, a laptop has an integrated display, keyboard, and network hardware. And laptops also use specialized or proprietary components for hard drives, system boards, memory, CPUs, and other components. So replacing these devices involves much different procedures than that of a desktop computer. And some of the general differences include the following. The first one is the component sources. So replacement components such as a display, keyboard, wireless network card, and a system board are available only from what is called the original equipment manufacturer or the OEM, and these are also known as OEM parts. Other components such as optical drives and hard drives, memory, and the CPU, all of that can be purchased from third-party sources, but differ greatly from their desktop counterparts. The next general difference is the power sources. So a laptop, this is powered by an internal battery and an AC adapter that also charges the battery. As with other laptop components, the original vendor is the most typical source for for replacements, although some third-party vendors may sell universal replacement AC adapters that will work. And then you have components that are unique to laptops. So laptops, they include several components typically not included on desktop computers, including an antenna in the display that is connected to a mini PCIe card to provide wireless networking, a keyboard with an integrated touchpad or a pointing stick, a touchscreen or a non-touchscreen display, and integrated speakers. And these differences along with the extensive use of plastics and the use of tiny screws, they can make servicing a laptop a major challenge even for those who are experienced with servicing a desktop computer. So let's go ahead and talk about laptop access. So here are several best practices that you should use when you need to disassemble a laptop to get access to its internal hardware to either upgrade or replace defective components. And the first thing you need to consider is reading the manufacturer's documentation. So documentation, this can help you properly identify screw types, screw lengths, the number of screws, because some laptops may have more than 100, cable and component locations and other information that is needed. Most vendors offer this information online, but some manufacturers insist on doing repairs themselves and do not provide documentation for access to these computers. Next thing you need to consider is the use of appropriate hand tools for case disassembly and component removal. So using recommended tool types and sizes, this helps prevent problems such as damaging screw heads by using a screwdriver that is too large. Repair documentation typically lists the recommended tools for each procedure. So you want to proceed with caution. If you break a part of the laptop, you may not be able to buy it locally, but you may have to order it from the OEM if you want a replacement. Also, you want to document and label cable and screw locations. So laptops, they typically use a mixture of screw lengths and sometimes screw types. So if you mix them up, you could damage the components or end up being unable to secure them properly. So you want to take photos at different stages of disassembly, which may also help you with the reassembly process. And then you want to organize your parts. So consider using a multiple compartment parts tray with a lid for part sorting and storage or consider a magnetic dish, which can also help prevent you losing some of your parts in the process. Now, if you need to replace the battery, the mass storage, such as the hard disk drive or the solid state drive, the SODIMM RAM or a wireless adapter on a typical laptop, you need to access these components components from the bottom of the laptop. Now understand some laptops, they use a single cover for all upgradable components rather than multiple covers. And some laptops that require disassembly to access the hard disk drive or the SSD storage. So you want to check your system documentation for details. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So what I have right here is an old laptop. I believe I bought this back in like 2006 and I don't think I've used it since 2009. It's just been sitting around collecting dust. 
But I figure I'll use it for this little quick demonstration to kind of highlight some of the inside components of a laptop. So we're looking at the bottom of the laptop. As you can see, we have a whole bunch of screws that we need to unscrew here. Looks like I've already unscrewed some of the screws and lost the screws, but we're going to go through and unscrew these three screws right here. This is going to give us access to all the inside components of the laptop. All right. All right. So let's talk about the battery. So a failing laptop battery, this can be a source for all kinds of problems for the user. Most manufacturers have diagnostic software that reports on the health of the battery and estimates how many cycles are left. It is best to be proactive in battery replacement. So if you need to purchase a replacement battery for a laptop, you may consider a larger capacity battery if one is available for the model that's being repaired. And also, when messing around with the battery, you want to take precautions against ESD or electrostatic discharge when you change the battery. You want to discharge any static electricity in your body by touching a metal object before you open the battery compartment and do not touch the contacts on the battery or the contacts in the battery compartments with your hand unless you want to get electrocuted. So keep that in mind. So let's talk about the DC jack. So here is the DC jack right here. This is the actual adapter piece that plugs into your laptop to feed your laptop electricity. This is what is called the power brick right here. This is the component where there would be another wire hanging off this thing that plugs into the wall, which basically AC comes out the wall. It hits the power brick. AC is converted from AC to DC in the power brick. Then it is fed to the DC jack, which then plugs into your laptop to feed your laptop DC electricity. So the DC jack, and like I say, this is also referred to as the power adapter port. This receives DC power from the AC DC power adapter and then passes it off to the battery. Now, if the DC jack fails, the laptop's battery cannot be charged and the laptop cannot run on external power either. Next, let's talk about keyboards. So if a laptop keyboard or its pointing device or the touchpad or the pointing stick fails, you have to replace the unit. A laptop with a touchpad has a keyboard that is separate from the touchpad, whereas a laptop with a pointing stick has a pointing stick that is integrated with the keyboard. And some laptops have both types of pointing devices. But regardless, if either fails, you got to replace the whole thing. Next, let's talk about RAM or random access memory. So things to keep in mind before you select the right memory upgrade for a laptop, you need to keep in mind its form factor. So most laptops in service, they use what is called DDR2, DDR3, or DDR4 SODEM. SODEM stands for small outline dual inline memory module. You also need to keep in mind the memory speed. So if you plan to add a module, you need to make sure it is the same speed as the existing module. If you plan to replace the modules, then you need to buy a match set of modules in the fastest speed supported by that system. And then also you need to consider memory timing. So the most common way to refer to memory timing is by its column address strobe or its CAS value. If you install memory modules that use different CAS values, the laptop could become unstable, crash, or lock up. And how you can go about determining the correct memory to use for a memory upgrade, you can use the interactive memory upgrade tools that are available from major third-party memory vendor websites. And these tools list the memory modules that are suitable for particular laptops. And some use an ActiveX web control to detect the currently installed memory crucial system scanner this is a very useful tool for showing what's currently installed and what is compatible and you can also check the vendor's memory specifications so you can determine parts numbers by using this method this method is best if memory must be purchased from the laptop vendor rather than from a memory vendor and also laptops, they have two connectors for memory, typically using small outline DIMMs or SODIM, which are the reduced size versions of DIMM modules. And in this picture right here, this is a typical RAM stick that will go inside of a desktop computer. This one as well. And this is a SODIM or a small outline dual inline memory module. This is just a DIM dual inline memory module. But the SODIM, this is what you would find inside of an actual laptop. All right, let's talk about hard disk drives and solid state drives. So most laptop computers, they use a 2.5 inch storage drive that comes in one of two common choices, either a hard disk drive or a solid 
Golden State drive. Both have strengths and weaknesses, and each could be the right choice depending on the scenario that's presented. So the first one is a hard disk drive or an HDD. So these magnetic disks have been a standard option for years, and they combine low cost with large capacity. However, it is slower than the other option. And also with magnetic disks and moving parts that can wear down, it is also the least reliable. And then we have the solid state drive or the SSD. So an SSD, this is a flash memory drive with no moving parts. It is much faster than an HDD when booting and storing or retrieving data. Also, SSDs currently cost more money than HDDs and their prices are dropping and their capacity is improving. And many newer laptops have what is called an M.2 expansion port that can support an M.2 SSD card that is directly mounted to the circuit board for even faster reading. And as a side note, some Ultrabooks, they use the 1.8 inch or the 2.5 inch SSD form factor and the larger 3.5 inch drive form factor. This is what's typically used in a desktop drive enclosure in a desktop computer. Next, let's talk about wireless cards. So a laptop with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth support typically uses either a mini PCIe expansion card or an M.2 card to provide wireless network support. The M.2 card form factor, which is also called NGFF, and that stands for Next Generation Form Factor. This is also used for an SSD and other input output devices. But note that the M.2 card slot made for SSDs cannot be used for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth cards. Regardless of which wireless card a laptop uses, there are two antennas that lead from the Wi-Fi antennas built into the display panel that need to be connected to the card. So as you can see in this picture right here, you have a white wire plugged into this lead and a black wire connected to this lead. These two wires are what wrap around the display of your laptop, which provides your laptop with wireless connectivity. All right, guys. So here we are looking at the inside of this old laptop that I've had sitting around my house for like 10 years now. Right here, we have a standard hard disk drive that's, that's uh, connected to this part right here to unscrew it or to take it out, I should say. You want to unscrew this screw here and this screw here. You would just simply slide it out. Right here, we have our memory. This is a DDR3 or this is a SODIMM memory chip right here. Right here, we have our wireless network chip. So basically, this is what allows us to connect to the internet via Wi-Fi. As you can see, we got the black wire and the white wire right here. They connect directly to the chip right here. If you were to follow these wires all the way around, eventually these wires will make their way up to the laptop display and wrap around the frame of the laptop. Over here, we have our cooling fan. We have our heat sink right here. And then up under this is our main memory or our CPU chip, which uh, kicks off a lot of heat that needs to be uh, expelled from the machine so that everything Thing doesn't heat up and go berserk up in here all right I want to show you guys how to take apart the actual hard drive. So like I said earlier, you got a screw right here and a screw right here. It may be different for your laptop, but this is what I'm working with over here. So I'm just going to unscrew this. Matter of fact, let me get this one because this one has a magnetic tip to it. I don't want to lose my screws. So after I got the two screws up, I'm just going to slightly lift this up and then I'm going to pull it out just like that right there. And this is our hard disk drive right here. Like I said, this laptop's about, uh, let me see, about 15 years old. So technology has changed, but the inside components are, you know, still pretty much the same for the most part. You unscrew it and it plugs into this component right here. And so this is, like I said, this is pretty much all it is. It's just a hard disk drive. It's a 2.5 inch disk drive that is made to fit inside of a laptop. Put it back in. You just simply plug it back in. So you want to line up your little pins here and then you just push it in. Bam. Just like that. Take your screws and screw it back in. All right. Next, I'm going to show you how to take out the RAM here. So here is our RAM, our SODIMM RAM, our small outline DIMM, a dual inline memory module. So right here, you have these two little hooks or clips, whatever you want to call it. You're going to push them to the side. Then the RAM chip is going to come up like this. So just take your fingers, slide these little hooks to the side over here. This is an old laptop, so I'm going to use this to assist me to get it all the way out. I don't plan on using this laptop anyway, so it doesn't matter. You see how it came up? And then you're just going to pop this bad boy out. Bam, just like that. And this is your ram stick here I only have one for this laptop like i say this thing was made back in 2005 so as you notice with the ram here you got all your copper heads and then you got your little key right here 
when you insert this back in you want to make sure that this key this little notch right here is aligned with the notch that they have over here you can properly seat the ram and once you get it there it shouldn't be that complicated for you to push in just push it push it push it real good do 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 for some reason my pushing ain't working hold on let me give it let me give it a little bit more pushing hold on there it is you push it you hear the little sounds the uh, push it down snaps back into place so that is how you put take the ram in and out ladies and gentlemen all right and finally i want to show you this is our wireless card over here this is what allows for me to get some wi-fi and it's pretty much the same process as popping the ram out you got your hooks right here it's going to slide them bad boys to the side i'm going to use this because uh like i say i don't ever use this laptop so it doesn't matter this thing has been con collecting dust for years I have no plans of ever using it. I know some of y'all are probably like, oh my goodness. Oh well, my stuff, baby. All right, anyways, it pops open. You pull it out. Same deal. You got your copper heads right here. You got your little notch or your key right here to let you know how to put this bad boy in. You got your black and your white wire that wraps all the way around to the frame, the uh, the LCD frame. This is what allows for me to get some Wi-Fi access up in here on and popping. So to put this back in, it's going to be the same thing. We're just going to slide it in, make sure my notch is lined up here, my little key is lined up. Push it in. Did I hear it? Push it down. Bam. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this is essentially the inside components of a laptop. All right, let's real quickly talk about some physical privacy and security components. So the first one is biometrics. So a biometric device, this is a security identification and authentication device. Such devices use automated methods of verifying or recognizing the identity of a living person based on physiological or behavioral characteristics. And these characteristics include fingerprints, facial images, iris, and voice recognition scans. And then we have what is called near field communication or NFC. So near field communication, this is a set of communication protocols that enable two electronic devices, one of which is usually a portable device, such as a smartphone, to establish communication by bringing them within four centimeters of each other. Near field communication enables smartphones to be used for payment services, such as Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, and others. NFC also enables file transfers between supported devices. NFC can also allow for a user to be authenticated to a laptop by way of the smartphone or smartwatch, which wouldn't require the user to have to type in a username and password combination to get access to the device. All right, so that was our quick class on laptop hardware and components, where we talked about the battery components, keyboards, RAM, HHDs and SSDs, wireless cards, biometrics, and near field communication. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 220 1101 certification exam. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.